Good morning lovelies and welcome back to the farm. Can anyone believe it's the end of September? Like where the hell has this year gone? Anyway, uh, today I am going to be using you guys as motivation to get all my garden up today. I've got a massive to-do list that we need to knock through today um, and I thought by making this video it would actually get me to get those jobs done, which like win-win really. So we're going to start off in there, that's the onion patch and, oh, and the potato patch. We're going to leave the potatoes but we are going to go and dig up all the onions and then I'm going to pop them into the polytunnel, lay them out because it's nice and warm and dry in there, just let them cure for a couple of days and then they'll be able to store much better. It's really early in the morning. Johnny has just left for work um, so I think we just need to crack on and get this list done. So I've just dug up all the easy ones, however, <laughs> you, see all, you see all these weeds here, yeah, there's onions under there too, so now I need to try and battle the weeds to get to them. Oh, there's a beauty. Look at that, he's a monster. So whilst I'm in the polytunnel, I'm also going to take these ones back in. Now these have been in here probably for about a week curing, a little bit too long. It's absolutely fine. I'm going to take these back into the house now. When you cure them, you leave them somewhere warm and dry, which a polytunnel obviously is perfect for that. And the skin kind of tightens around the actual onion. The roots become like crispy and you can just brush them off if you want. You can cut off the top of the stalks if they bother you. They don't bother me in the slightest. And I don't have very many here and a lot of them unfortunately are really small. They didn't get enough water unfortunately during the summer. We had such a hot summer here. Um, so it, a lot of them are quite small but they'll still be very tasty I'm sure. So I'm just going to take these ones back to the house. And when you're laying vegetables down like this, try not to bash them around, especially if it's a fruit or vegetable that you want to store for any amount of time. If you get a bruise, say on an apple or an onion, and then you lay it down for storage, that area that you bashed, that you bruised, is likely to go bad quicker than the rest of the fruit. And it could actually turn that fruit or onion, um, it could turn that one bad, but it could also spread and turn all your others bad too. So it's worth just taking a little extra time and being really gentle with them. And actually, before we leave the polytunnel, let me just show you the tomatoes quickly. They're doing okay. It's not been a brilliant crop for me this year, which is entirely my fault. I did get quite lazy with the watering um, and it really showed the plants are still pretty big, but the fruit have taken an age to actually grow and now ripen. These are the tigerellas that we grew for the first time last year. Which they're such pretty fruit. Um, these ones are the first ones that are even close to being ripe on those. I was really late getting those plants in though, entirely my fault. Uh, these monster big ones, they look really quirky and weird, but the flavour of those has been astronomically superb. There's another one there, look at that. Looks ever so weird, but oh my goodness. I think this is my new favourite variety. If I can remember the name or find the name, I'll put it, pop it on the screen now. And then these are Gardener's Delight. These are the ones that were my dad's favourite to grow and we've always grown these every single year. These are the ones that we absolutely grow. Um, not a brilliant crop from them this year, but those that we have had have been very tasty. That's the thing with watering tomatoes. If you overwater them, you lose flavour. 
but obviously if you underwater them you slow their progress down especially in a polytunnel in a hot summer this is the chili plant that overwintered in here last year so unfortunately i don't know the name of this but look at these flowers aren't they just the prettiest so so beautiful obviously chilies and tomatoes are part of the nightshade family you can really see that in these flowers they're so beautiful lots and lots of chilies on there i've tried one of the red ones um, raw there was absolutely zero heat in it so i'm hoping when they fully ripen they turn yellow when they go ripe uh, when they fully ripened hopefully there'll be a little bit more punch to them i don't tend to buy really hot chilies because i'm more interested in the flavor and a nice gentle heat that you can then build up over the years i have grown uh, really hot chili peppers but it's just i don't use them that much because i want the flavor as much as a little bit of heat whereas when you grow the really hot ones you just like instantly fry your taste buds so that's not why i like chili Here's my little herb garden. I've just recently cleared this. I cleared all the nasturtiums, uh, the mallow, everything got wiped out of there. I've cut the lemon balm right back and the chives as well. And already these chives are sprouting again. Plants are just amazing. They just want to keep growing. These along here are wild strawberries that I planted this year. My mum grew those from seed actually, which is nice. And the reason I've cleared all this is so that I could plant these very sad looking red pointed cabbage. Um, I've already lost a couple, um, but that's okay. I've got more seedlings to put in, so that's not fretting me. My sage over the back there is looking very, very sad. And I want to get some winter veg in this area too. The other side of the herb garden is kind of the bit that I left to go wild for the bees. It's still looking wild. I was about to clear it and then I'd scattered some wild flower seeds in here and then these beautiful things popped up and I didn't have the heart to cut all that back so this garden will get done at some point but I'm not stressing about it because it just looks so pretty and a little bit messy which kind of sums up my gardening style really. The lavenders that I put in earlier this year they haven't taken brilliantly I mean they're still alive and they've definitely flowered they smell beautiful but they were so covered by all this corn flower that they just kind of got a little bit buried under it all so yeah one day that'll all get cleared the bronze fennel has now gone to seed so they could be collected and the rosemary has kind of turned into a triffid and that needs cutting right back and tidying up there's a mint in here that has gone to flower and then if I walk you through the rest of the allotment, I've cleared all the nasturtiums and all the mess that was up here. I've also taken out some of those Swiss chard. Uh, Mum likes them and the chickens like them, uh, but they were getting really overrun. So I pulled them out and I've been planting Brussels sprouts. There's a little one hiding there in between that label. Um, so there's a few more dotted around in here. On the other side, again, I've cleared all of that. And over here, we've got cauliflowers in. I've left the artichokes until they stop flowering. I'm going to leave those in because the bees are still scoffing away at those. Um, but when they die, they look quite kind of cool as well. Amazing plant. And these ones up here are still in full flower. Just lovely. The strawberries down here, they're all finished now. We're not getting any more fruit. This kale has just been incredible. It's absolutely delicious. That chopped up really finely and then sauteed in some garlic butter is just to die for. But what I have noticed is we were supposed to net these um, and we didn't. And what I've noticed is that we're getting these little yellow egg sacs on them, which I can only assume is from the myriad of cabbage white butterflies that we're getting around. Just trying to find you another one. So in a minute, these are going to be scoffed by caterpillars. Um, so I think what I need to do is get a lot of this in into the house, washed, cleaned. You can just these just scrub off these little eggs. Just scrub them off in cold water, then let them dry and then slice them up and pop them in a big freezer bag into the freezer and then you can just grab a handful whenever you want just delicious i love 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 this kind of food and honestly i can eat this for breakfast lunch or dinner i just love it in amongst the weeds here i've planted some more cauliflowers so i do need to come along with the hoe and clear all these out 
um, but these are going to hopefully be good. I love cauliflower too. And then over here, this is our sweet corn or corn on the cob. We have got so many in there. Look at that one. It's huge. They're so sweet and so creamy. They're absolutely delicious. We need to get these processed now. So I'm probably going to clear this whole patch today and get them um, probably processed in the freezer because as you can see over this side, we've got even more. <laughs> Uh, coming down here, I've cleared a bunch of stuff out of here and I've planted a mix of curly kale, which is the really dark green one, and some red kale, red boar it's called. So we've got a few of those in as well. We've still got some squash going over here. We've got spaghetti squash and a courgette, a yellow courgette. Let me just show you one of the yellow courgettes that has turned into a little bit of a monster. There he is. So that, I guess, is it classed as a yellow marrow now. And there's my spaghetti squash there, still waiting for him to ripen. Delicious. And I don't know if you remember, but over this side, this was all a mass of nasturtiums last time I did a farm tour. So I've cleared all of those. And as you can see, everywhere in the soil, these are the seed pods that the nasturtiums leave. So we're never going to get rid of nasturtiums in this garden. There are tons of them, but that's fine. The bees love them and I love them. They're good eating. Over here I've planted, oh, I can't see the label. What are you? Oh, that's Cavallo Nero. So that's a kale. It's the thin stemmed, really dark blue green kale. Probably my favorite kale. Still got some borage on the go here which is kind of on its last legs now. Uh, these are beetroot, these little red stemmed plants. And then I've just got some lettuce going in there. And then these are the rest of the veggies that I need to get in the ground. So we've got more Cavallo Nero or black kale to go in. We've got some red cabbage. They look delicious, although the plants aren't looking that happy. And then these are all beetroots as well. And in each of these blocks, is a ton of plants. I think they just whacked a handful of seed in each block, so they need to go in the ground. As you can see, these are all desperate. <laughs> they need a new home to go to. So yeah, lots of winter veg gone in, so that makes me feel much, much happier. Um, these corn over this side, I'm not quite sure when I'm gonna get to clearing those, but like I said, I think I'd like to clear these ones today because then I can put all those seedlings you just saw into this spot here. Do you know what? I think it's starting to rain. How rude. It looks a bit different from last time you were here, huh? And now coming over to our second patch, the raspberries have had a second wind, which was quite a surprise to me. There's loads of them. So I need to get out and pick all of these as well. Look how perfectly ripe that is. You see it's kind of hanging off its little stem there. That is a real treat. Fresh from the garden. Perfect. Mmm. Oh boy, that's so good. Blueberries have done really well as well. Only a couple left in there, look. Hopefully mum got the others and not the birds because when I came up a couple of days ago, that was full. That's a ton of raspberries to still be getting at the end of September. That's amazing. These are the strawberries that mum planted and this is how a strawberry spreads. These are all suckers that come off and on the end of each of these, well not even on the end, all along these you get these new plants starting. And as you can see this lot here is just some of the ones of this one plant. So these are incredibly vigorous and they just want to kind of spread the love. That is a lot of strawberry plants. Um, Mum planted these, I think, last year. You don't tend to get a lot of fruit off them when they're new. But next year, this lot will do us proud, I am sure. This is our next door neighbour's plot here. These are an allium, so I'm not quite sure what they were. Uh, possibly leeks. They could be onions or spring onions. Part of the allium family or part of the onion family. But this is what happens when you don't pick them. They turn into these beautiful round globes and this would have been probably a purple round flower, really beautiful. And then it turns into this seed head like this. They're so, so pretty. I always like to leave a couple of onions or leeks in when I grow them just so that we get the flowers. And this is their lettuces that have gone to seed. 
So again, when you get when you buy a lettuce and it's a small little bundle, when you leave it in the ground, it sprouts up this stalk in the centre, and then it flowers and turns to seed, and that's how that reproduces. They look quite alien, don't they? This is their chive patch. That's what a chive flower looks like, and again, that dries out and goes to seed. And another neighbour has this patch here. That is a monster bean. Wow. I reckon that could win a competition or two, don't you? That's huge. I would guesstimate that's over a foot long. Ew. I don't think I like the look of that so much. Not a fan of those eight-legged things. There's more beans up there, look. They're amazing. Right, now it's time to attack those sweet corns. So let's get that done. So this little one, none of us are going to want to eat that, but I do know some chickens that would love that. Okay, I'm a couple of minutes into clearing that sweet corn uh, and the heavens open. So I'm just gonna hide in here with the cat for a little while. Hopefully it will pass over quickly. It's really, really muggy today. Very hot and very sweaty. So I'm kind of quite glad that it started raining. Hopefully it will clear the air a little bit. Well, so much for a short, quick shower. This is actually really quite heavy, so I think I'm gonna leg it home and go and have a cup of coffee and, you know, just chill for a little while until the weather decides to behave itself. Right, it stopped raining. Fingers crossed it's gonna behave itself from now on. And we've got a gardener strimming right next to the allotment, so it's gonna be a little bit noisy for a while. So you might wanna talk amongst yourselves. So I've now just completely cleared all the corn from this side and having just spoken to mum and because I'm just going to hand it all over to her so she can process all the sweet corn, I'm also going to get this patch cleared as well and then I'm kind of back to zero really. I think pretty much I've got everything out that I need to for this time of year so I'm on a bit of a roll. <laughs> it's ruddy hard work and it's really hot and sticky and muggy um, but it will be good to get that out of there. Just to prove that this whole farm life thing isn't particularly glamorous. Look at the state of me. I'm sweating. I'm scarlet red. My hair's gone all frizzy. Stupid weather started raining again. But I've cleared both patches of sweet corn and I've just had a very strong word with my mother. She's not allowed to plant anything in that allotment next year because I'm not eating corn on the cob. Johnny doesn't like it. And her and my brother have now gone off it after planting a bazillion plants. So mum, brother, you're banned from saying fur in the allotment unless you're coming to help me weed, and then you're more than welcome. Right, I'm gonna go and have a cold drink because I'm sweltering, and then hopefully I can get some seedlings planted.
Oh, there's a double yoker. Haven't had one of them for a while. lots of figs on our fig tree this year. I did see one had ripened um, about two weeks ago. First one that has ever ripened on this little tree but unfortunately I didn't get it to it in time. I think the birds had it. It's only a little thing, it's packed in fruit. Fingers crossed I actually get to eat one from this tree this year. It's now the afternoon because the rain was actually quite insistent but it has now done one thankfully. I'm much happier now that um, ground is cleared and those seedlings are in. That's brilliant, that's made me happy. I've got about 50 cobs of corn there which I need to go and give to mum. I've still got some beetroot down there to plant but I'm going to do that a little bit later because just in case the rain comes back I want to do a quick tour around the farm just to show you all the wild stuff that's out. So let's take a wander. Up here we've got these pear trees that my dad planted many, many years ago. Let's see what these taste like. Mmm, that's delicious. Slightly bit sharp. And there's still a little bit of crispy bite to it. That is really flavourful, so delicious. Wow, this little rhubarb's hanging on. Ours is long gone. I'm surprised to still see rhubarb out, to be honest. Ah, oh, isn't that a lovely sight? Pretty little acorns. You can make flour with acorns, I'll be honest. I've never tried it. Maybe one of these days I will. This is a hazel hedge, and just up there is a hazelnut, or a cobnut. So you take that frilly bit off. Hang on, I need two hands. <laughs> there we go. Inside that frilly bit is the hazelnut shell. Crack that open and you'll have a fresh green hazelnut in there. These taste really, really good. I've got a recipe, I think, for hazelnut or green hazelnut and chocolate brownies over on the blog. It uses fresh hazelnuts, so literally picked straight from the tree, from the hedge. Um, if you wanted to store these for a long time, you'd need to dry them out. And I think... Commercially, they grow, dry them out in kilns, I've got a feeling. I've never bothered drying them, honestly. I just crack them open and they get used within a month or so. So I have no worries about storing them. I used to crack these open with my teeth. Um, luckily, I'm a little bit more sensible now, so I'm not going to try that. Here's our eating apple orchard. This is the orchard that my dad planted a few, about 30 years ago, I guess. So these are all eaters and Obviously, we're not getting anywhere near eating them all or even processing them all. Such a good year for apples. Oh my goodness. I think this is my favourite variety of all the eating apples that we've got. They're really small. They never get very big. I've no clue what the name of this apple variety is. Um, inside, they've got this bright white flesh with this dark red skin. They are so sweet and so juicy. Oh my goodness. Just looking at that through the camera is making my mouth water. They're really, really delicious. Hi, how are you, pretty girl? Hello, you're my favourite duck. <laughs> you sweet girl. There they are. Lovelies, I'm going to call it a day here. I'm just going to come and hang out with my ducks for a while, I think. If you've enjoyed this video, please give me and the ducks a thumbs up. And we'll see you next week in our next video, won't we ducks?